Welcome to Concepts of Programming Languages with Professor Kaler. Today I want to talk a little more about parse trees. We want to think about what the purpose of a parse tree is. We're going to use parse trees when we have a grammar for a language or a portion of a language. We have a sentence from the language. So a program, a statement, a block of statements, an expression, some coherent piece of the language, but this is what is actually in the code. And we want to show how the sentence and the grammar are related. So the idea is that I want to show how this sentence fits with that grammar. The structure of the sentence matches the grammar that I have. That's what a parse tree does. So let's start with a sample grammar. Here I've got a very simplified grammar for an assignment statement. We're going to turn assignment statement into an identifier, the equal sign, an expression, and the semicolon. So typical of Java, C, C++. Expression, we've got five different options for. It could be an expression plus an expression, an expression minus an expression, an expression in parentheses, an identifier or an integer. We're going to limit our identifiers to just A or B or C. And we're not going to worry about breaking down integer further. Whenever we see integer, we're just going to say, okay, that can be an integer. So here are some sample sentences that would match that grammar. C is assigned A plus 10. B is assigned 11. A is assigned B. A is assigned A plus B plus C minus parenthesis 10 minus C close parenthesis. And I also have an example complex expression. A plus B minus open paren, C minus A, close paren, plus 11. So all of these are sentences that match that grammar that we have. So then the parse tree is going to show us how that grammar can be matched to those sentences. So our root of the tree is going to be the non-terminal for the whole sentence. So if we're thinking about C is assigned A plus 10, then the root of the tree is going to be assignment statement. If we want a parse tree for just a plus b minus c minus a plus 11, then we're going to have the expression non-terminal as the root of our tree. The leaves of our tree are always going to be the individual items, the tokens, the terminals for the sentence. For our first example, if c is assigned a plus 10, you know, have these five terminals, C, the equal sign, A, the plus sign, and 10. For the expression, we're going to have each of those elements, A, the plus sign, B, the minus sign, open parenthesis, C, minus sign, A, close parenthesis, plus sign, and 11. So each of those tokens that make up this sentence, those are the leaves. Then in between the root and the leaves, we're going to have any intermediate non-terminals that show up in the grammar. The children of any non-terminal are going to represent one of the possible rules for that non-terminal. We're going to look at our grammar and find a rule that turns the non-terminal parent into a set of terminals and non-terminals in a sequence, and that sequence is going to be the set of children. So our assignment statement in our sample grammar will always have the same four children. An identifier non-terminal, the equal sign terminal symbol, the expression non-terminal, and the semicolon terminal symbol. Expression, on the other hand, any node that has that non-terminal could have any of five different options for its set of children. We could have expression plus expression or expression, the minus sign, expression, parentheses, and the expression in between them, or an identifier, just one child, or an integer, again, just one child. And what we pick is going to depend on what's going to match our sentence. Again, look at the grammar, see the first sentence that we're looking at as our first example. So C is assigned A plus 10. 
since this is an assignment statement, the root of our tree is going to be assignment statement. And then it will have the four children we said it was going to have. Now the equal sign and the semicolon, those are terminals, they're leaves. So we don't break those down further. The identifier we need to replace with a terminal symbol. And in this case, we have C. Our expression, we have to look at our sentence and our expression is a plus 10. So that's going to be an expression plus another expression. The first expression, it needs to turn into a, an identifier, which will be A. So we see the child identifier and its child A. The second expression after the plus is 10, has to match 10. So it's going to turn into an integer, which will be 10. And there we have the whole parse tree. So what that's showing us is as we look at the non-terminal parents, we see which rule was applied by looking at its children. And so this shows us the rules that are needed and how we can come up with a set of rules that will match this sentence to that non-terminal. So as a second example, let's take a look at our expression, a plus b minus open paren c minus a close paren plus 11. So in this case, our root will be the expression non-terminal because that's what we have. That's what the fragment we're looking at of the language represents. So this tree will be a little more complex because it's a more complex expression. We have the expression at the top and this is one approach to doing a parse tree for this. Note that there are other options for how we could break this down, but we're going to use the same basic set of rules to get it. We need one set of rules that will give us this set of leaves. So I've chosen to use the plus first, matching the first operator. So we have the expression. It's going to turn into identifier A. The other one needs to cover the whole rest of the sentence. And there I've put the minus for the B. And you can see that breaking down into an identifier and a B. The other side needs to cover the whole rest of the expression. Then we have an expression that will turn into the parenthesis C minus A close parenthesis. That has to work that way because the only way we can get that in this space, given what we have at this point, is to have that expression on the left and on the right we'll have the expression integer 11. And then of course the expression inside the parenthesis must break down into the C minus A. So what this is doing again is showing us how we can take this sentence and use the grammar rules to get the structure of the sentence and make that grammar match the sentence. I hope you found this helpful in terms of understanding what's going on with the parse tree. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time when we'll be talking about ambiguity in grammars.